What's up, motherfuckers? Uh, Maiden Slave here. Now, I'm not much of a collector, you know, especially nowadays. Um, but there was a time when I was very much into collecting CDs when they were relevant, especially with Maiden. It's kind of fun because, you know, I don't know, it's a collecting cards because Eddie looks so damn cool. Um, so I kind of just wanted to show you guys the. Uh, you know, just what I have. Nowadays, I don't get any CDs at all. Um, so yeah, let's just go through a little bit of this. I'm trying to want to get the fuck out of the way of the light. So yeah, there's the first album. That's the ugly artwork I was talking about in the review. Um, yeah, Killers. The CD case is kind of broken. All this shit is starting to break, you know. And that's the thing about CDs is eventually they'll start breaking and scratching and. Number of the Beast. Now the funny, I have a little funny story about that Number of the Beast. Uh, I actually originally had the the the, uh, the like the nasty blue co uh, cover of Number of the Beast, um, but one time I went to my friend's house and and I um, swapped it out because he had the cool black one. I swapped it out and I took his black one. It looks way better. Uh, a little funny story about that. Peace of mind. Power slave after death. Oh, blah blah blah. Somewhere in time. Seventh Son, which was my first. Seventh Son was like my first album that I got that was like from the classic era. Um, so I have, I remember getting that. That was really cool. Uh, no Prayer for the Dying. No Prayer for the Dying, actually, funny enough, is the last uh, Maiden CD I got because when I was a kid, you know, there was pretty much only one mall that I could go to. Uh, I didn't have a car, and I couldn't really get rides to far places, and No Prayer for the Dying was never, ever, ever, ever in the store, any any stores. I couldn't find it anywhere, because obviously it's not that popular of an album, it's not that great, but I had to have it, and it was the only studio album, at least, that I didn't have, and, and it's so funny that, like, freaking, like, five years later, when I don't even care anymore, I was kind of even out of Iron Maiden at this point. I'm just casually walking by uh, in a store, and I see it, and I'm like, what the hell? And I just had to get it, even though I wasn't an entire maiden, because I always just had to get it. It was always the, it was always the album that I couldn't get, I, and I couldn't find. So yeah, a little funny story about that. A Fear of the Dark with a torn cover, but it doesn't matter, because it has ugly pictures on the inside. Real Life Dead One. Um, now, I didn't review, and I don't plan to review Iron Maiden's live albums, because in my opinion, there's only a few good ones. The best one, obviously, is... That absolutely one of the best metal uh, concerts in the of all time, and these two right here are complete and utter garbage. They're from the the shitty era of No Prayer for the Dying, Fear of the Dark, and they're just really, really bad. Um, uh, X Factor, of course, great album. Uh, best of the Beast. Best of the Beast is probably the best best of. Now Iron Maiden, they come out with a best of like every fucking five seconds and. It's always the same songs, but Best of the Beast actually had a lot of variety on it and had like Virus and had like Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and so on. Uh, Virtual Eleven, uh, Brave New World. Um, some CD cases I'm missing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys also my CD collection of Maiden, which I have everything. And some of the things are missing like Rock and Rio, which is another one of their really good live albums. Uh, Dance of Death. Um, the Essential Iron Maiden, which was complete waste of money, waste of time. I don't even know why I got it. It was no, it was there was nothing great about it. Um, Death on the Road, shitty concert, wasn't that great. Um, Bruce completely fucked up Lord of the Flies in that concert, and the, the performance there was just nothing new. Um, this is the worst, best of in my opinion. There's nothing cool about this. It doesn't even have that great of songs on it. The artwork looks shitty. The, the 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 cover the in the cover and the inside and everything sucks yeah bullshit of course matter life and death uh, different world uh, this is a single I have a few singles I have like different world and Wicker Man and even when I was trying to collect everything I I, you, I knew that there was no way I was ever gonna get all the singles so if I saw them around I would get them so that was one that I saw a pretty cool single it has Maiden playing uh, Hello Be Thy Name and I think these colors don't run. Or, or Brighter Than a Thousand Suns. They recorded at Abbey Road Studios, if you guys like bands like Pink Floyd and the Beatles. You know, that's why that's cool. Um, somewhere Back in Time. This was another complete waste for me to get. Uh, it's just a best of of that era. You guys already know. 
And uh, Flight 666, which is another complete waste of time. I, I, Iron Maiden are not playing good live anymore at all. They sound like shit. To, to me, their, their, their last best performance live was Rock and Rio. That thing was really, really, really good. Let's come up here for a second. Um, this is my one and only Iron Maiden vinyl. This is when I really started, was like, this was like the peak of my, uh, like, collecting mode, I guess you can say. Um, I actually started wanting to get vinyls, and, and this was the first one that I got, and kind of after that point, I, I stopped. But yeah, it's a pretty cool one. It's not the original Number the Beast single, it's the new one. It's a 2005 one with the 2005 live performances on it. Um, made in England, VHS right here. This is my second Maiden concert that I got when I was a kid. Made in England is a really, really, really good concert, man. It's like almost as good as Live After Death, and I'm always mad that they didn't ever make it into an actual CD, but they made like that dog shit into CDs, but they didn't make this concert into a CD. And um, they never made it into a DVD, but I, I'm pretty sure that I already know that the next volume in their history is going to be probably Made in England. Um, hopefully it's on Blu-ray and it'll be in the next volume of the history and I'm pretty sure they're going to do that but whether or not, you know, they, st I'm not sure if they're going to actually release the CD I'm pretty sure they're not going to release it as a CD ever which is a shame because it is a really good live concert it has really good performances on it anyways, on to another really good live album uh, the actual VHS, I remember when I got this when I was a kid Rock and Rio, great performance right here just really energetic, really, really good. But Maiden was still playing really good at this point. This is when they started falling apart, kind of right here in Death on the Road. Um, the concert itself, even when I got it when I was in the Maiden, I didn't really watch the entire concert. I didn't care. Uh, but the documentary in there is pretty interesting. It's them making Dance of Death, which is pretty cool. The early days. Oh, the early days. Look at that cover right there. The cover is so ugly. That's supposed to be Killers, Eddie. Did you guys know that? I don't know what it is with Maiden and, and shitty covers these days, man. But anyways, this is probably the best DVD that Maiden has... The best idea that Maiden has had. Uh, the history. Really interesting. Um, really, really, really interesting. Even if you're not that much into Iron Maiden, it's just a really good DVD uh, to have. Uh, you know, really good docu documentary and blah, 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 yada, yada. Live After Death finally was released on DVD. We've been waiting for it forever. It finally came out on DVD in like 2008. Right around the time when Blu-ray took over. And now it's not out on Blu-ray. But anyways, it it's still finally really cool that we got to see it on DVD. And obviously it's the second part of the history, which was really cool too. <clears throat> too. But they're fucking taking forever on the history. I don't know why they're doing that. But anyways, behind it is just... It looks... To you guys, it's just a black case and inside it's just a what would look like just a normal tape but this is the actual tape that has uh, Live After Death on it the first time I ever saw Iron Maiden is on this tape and it was Live After Death so that's I don't know I, I keep that just kinda for uh, I don't know what you call it sentimental value there you go alright so let's go ahead and look at my actual CDs I, like I said I don't collect CDs anymore so but I do have a lot when I did collect them. Let's see if I can get the light. Bam! Right there. That's the good Eddie right there from Iron Maiden. Yeah, nice. Of course, Killers. Really cool looking CDs, obviously Maiden. Number of the Beast. Peace of Mind with the Brain right there. I forgot to mention in my in my uh, review for uh, Peace of Mind how I thought it was a funny correlation that Peace of Mind was so much about like brains and stuff and they had brains all over the place and it was the first album to have Nickel McBrain on it and just a funny little correlation. Power Slave of course, Live After Death, be best metal concert of all time Oops. Uh, Somewhere in Time, cool CD, cool cover uh, Seven Son of Seven Son, No Prayer for the Dying the CD that took me like five years to get Fear the Dark. Ugh, a real life dead one. Ugh. Like the Dunnington. Even even when I was in a maiden, I just got those just to have them. Fear, uh, fear. <laughs> X Factor. Um, Best of the Beast. This is the single CD version. There's a double CD version. That's another thing I could never find, and now I just don't even care. Uh, Virtual Eleven. 
Ed Hunter. This was my first Iron Maiden CD, and I, of course, I lost the, the freaking the case. But I think I mentioned it in the X Factor review that Ed Hunter was my first uh, best of, and it's one of the best ofs. It has a good variety on it. it has enough blaze in there. Second CD, and then of course the legendary game. I don't know if you guys have played this before, but it's pretty cool. You know, actually, each level is an album, and that's a it's a good idea. If you if you play it now, it's complete. It looks completely like shit. It's completely uh, it didn't age well at all, and the gameplay is not that good, anyways. But I don't know if you guys ever played it, but the last level is impossible where you fight the four horsemen, the Wicker Man. One of the coolest CDs, man, ever. This is the single for The Wicker Man. Look at the CD. It's like, it just has Eddie on it. It's just clear. Really cool. I always liked that a lot. It has good live versions from Ed Hunter. That's another live CD uh, that I always wanted them to make on the Ed Hunter tour. They were so, like, they were playing so good on that tour. It was ridiculous. That right there is a blank spot because I don't have uh, Brave New Worlds in my car right now. Yeah, I was just listening to Brave New World. Uh, I didn't wasn't planning on that to happen, but I do have Brave New World. Uh, yeah, Rock and Rio. Kind of funny. I had Brave New World the CD case, but I didn't have Rock and Rio the case. And over here, I have Rock and Rio CD, but I don't have the fucking Brave New World CDs. Yeah, there's Edward the Great, just boring lettuce in a bowl. Edward the Great, nothing special about it. Here we go. This is the the uh, what's it called? The BBC Archives, Best of the B sides, uh, and Hammersmith Odeon uh, from 1982, I think. A little cool story about this. These obviously come from the the uh, I don't know if you guys know, but the um, I think the the like Eddie's Chest or whatever. But it was limited edition. This is another thing that not only did uh, not only could I not find because it was limited edition, but it was like two hundred, three hundred dollars, and my older brother got it, but I didn't have it. And I remember one day he gave me like his old CD case. He went out and he bought a new CD case. This one CDs were relevant. He went out and he bought a new CD case, and he said, "Yeah, you can have my old CD case." And I was like, "All right, cool." And I opened it, and these were in there, and he gave them to me because he knew that I was a big Maiden fan. Really cool. Dance of Death, cool CD cover. I mean, cool CD. The CD looks better than the actual fucking art. Front of the album. Uh, Essential Iron Maiden, completely unnecessary. Death on the Road, garbage. Matter of Life and Death, really cool CD. Once again, the CD looks better than the actual album cover. Uh, there's the uh, Different World um, CD for the single. This right here is a complete waste of time, garbage. And this was this is uh, cool CDs. Um, the stupid flight 666. I don't like that DVD, by the way, either. It's just, I don't know. I don't. I don't like it. I watched it once, and I don't know. It's just, I don't like the guy that does it. The the director uh, that did flight 66. He talks too much, and he's just annoying to me. And I turn the page. I turn the page, and as you guys can see, nothing. I never, ever, went out and wasted my money on the Final Frontier. Never. There's been times when I actually thought about it, just to have it, but I just decided that that would be a complete waste of time and money. Bam. There it is. Had to go get it from the car, but there it is.